Okay, chapter 14, Back to the Maze. For a while, I dared to think we had lost our pursuers. Between angry Komodos and other hungry reptiles, perhaps we could, had covered our tracks pretty well. Eagle soared ahead, still carrying Tiny, and I trusted she would take him to the other side of the park. For those of us on the ground, Sunrise set the pace. She kept her eyes set determinedly forwards, as if looking back would make her internal conflicts more real. Beside me, Brutus's tongue hung from his mouth. He was a chunky fellow and seemed to be tiring. I need a drink. I know how you feel, I said, giving him a pat. Barking sounded again behind us, and my hopes of the chase being over evaporated. Two dark shapes were streaking towards us. It was Joffa and Shadow. A familiar round building loomed into view. As we saw it, Rupert and I exchanged a worried glance. We know the maze, I said, right? We can work our way through? Rupert nodded grimly. We have to shake them off somehow. Might be our best chance. The front door was still open from the last time we'd been here, so we piled straight through. I intentionally left it open behind us. After all, we wanted the wolves to follow us in. I couldn't believe it, but I found myself hoping the rattlesnake was still here. Stay together this time, I growled at the dogs. No running off. No chasing reflections. Sunrise, you don't know this place. Let Nosy guide us. And Nosy, use your nose, not your eyes. Yes, boss. We edged along quietly so as not to draw the snake to us. Our pursuers didn't know to be quiet, though. Behind us came a snarl, and then... I turned and hurled a rock, smashing a mirror to pieces across our trail. The next moment, the real Joffa appeared around a corner. He considered the glass that would cut his paws if he trod on it, then backed off out of sight. I caught a reflection of the rattlesnake crawling across the tops of the mirrors, up towards the ceiling. Suddenly, it dropped down. And... I heard the wolves yapping in panic. This way! No, this way! Follow me! Where did you go? I'm here! Their barking echoed throughout the maze, then a thunk sounded from a couple of passages over. All the while, the snake continued to rattle ominously, as we crept along after Nosy. As we made it back, as we made it to the back exit, Joffa appeared down a side passage. He glared at us warily, as if trying to make up his mind whether we were real or not. I gave him an answer in the form of rocks. Joffa stepped on a shard and gelt. Run for it, I said. We broke into a dash for the back door. Rupert, Sunrise, Nosy and Brutus made it through ahead of me. Joffa crouched, then performed a mighty leap over the rest of the broken shards. I raced through the door and slammed it shut just as his weight thumped against us. it. Bam! We were back in the little yard with the rotten fence. Rupert was at the half-kicked-out hole again, trying to make it bigger. Bam! The door shuddered under my hands. Hurry! I called. I couldn't believe we were here again, except this time I was struggling to keep the door closed instead of get it open. Crack! A big piece of wood flew away from the fence. Rupert had made the hole big enough. He stood aside to wave Nosy through. Brutus followed, although he was a little too big, so he had to squeeze, showering splinters from either side. More cuts and bruises, no doubt. My poor doggies. Sunrise looked at me fretfully. It's okay, I said. I'll be right behind you. Just go. She and Rupert went through, and I gritted my teeth, waiting for the next impact. I needed to time this right to give us the best chance. Bam! Okay, I had a few seconds before Joffa slammed himself into the door again. I raced towards the hall. We can make it, said Rupert, as he helped me out the other side. Food court is just ahead. And the next chapter is called A Hard Goodbye. And it's chapter 15 and we've only got two left.